Hey there everyone, my name is Jordan from Happen Films and today we're checking out Fred and Shannon's amazing tiny house on wheels. Hi, my name's Fred Schultz and I'm here with my wife Shannon and my daughter Alina in this tiny house. It's right on 10 square meters, so it's 5.4 meters long and two and a half meters wide, goes up uh, 4.3 meters. And it took me uh, about three years in the designing off and on in SketchUp and then uh, about a year and a half, um, not all building uh, steady for that period uh, with friends, but mostly myself. The total material cost is probably around $45,000. Uh, 12,000 of that would be the solar panels and batteries. So. If you don't want to be off the grid, it can be a bit cheaper than that. Um, but again, that's mostly new materials. There are some eBay windows and things like that, but um, mostly new materials in that cost. Well, this is my tiny house, and uh, it's an off-the-grid tiny house, which means that we use uh, solar panels to charge the batteries, and everything works off of either the DC uh, for the lights, the direct current side, or we have an inverter that's in this converted ute box that's at the front, and that produces the uh, alternating current, regular 240, like a regular mains in a house. We've got two sets. There's the ones that are on the main part of the roof, and they're pitched at 30 degrees, and those end up being 840 watts. And then the adjustable ones with this adjustable leg, it has it pitched out, I think, at about 20 degrees now, so that's a summer orientation. We never really dip down below full here on this site because it's summertime and there's plenty of panels and um, yeah, it's easy. Wintertime will be the test. This tiny house has a double skin, so there's a radiant barrier between the corrugated steel and then the uh, plywood which it forms the bracing uh, against the uh, studs. So, and there's a batten, about 20 mil of uh, dead air space there uh, which creates that radiant barrier. The trailer's rated to just under 4.5 ton. These supports for the veranda, the awning, are uh, these are just temporary. I've got a post system that goes in when we're going to be in a place a bit longer than we're going to be here. Yeah, so let's go inside and uh, have a look around. So this is the um, what we call the chill space. It's basically our lounge where we just chill out. And um, I've got uh, storage underneath that pulls out here. Um, it also has a table that lives up here, just below the loft. And this comes down for a big dining room table and goes further down and locks in and that becomes a bed. And these cushions rearrange so that we can uh, have a sleeping area down here. We've got a, another little table over here, which is um, a breakfast table. We use this quite a bit. Um, this is the LED lights that we use, uh, 240 volt, uh, so they're very economical. Shannon said she didn't need a closet, a formal closet, but we, have, we do have a little bit of a place where we can hang things um, here. The design changed. Uh, when I was started out, I was single, and um, then when Shannon came along, she had uh, different needs, and so we had to sort of work and blend our values together to come up with something that really worked for the whole family. I think I'd seen pictures of them on the internet, but I hadn't really heard of the tiny house movement or people aspiring to live in a tiny house. I think my first reaction was, that's nice, dear, you can keep doing that. <laughs> I didn't think, oh goody, count me in. I guess I liked it too, that it was environmentally friendly. Like I thought, yeah, that fits for me. Yeah. Like take you into the kitchen now. So this is uh, sort of our kitchen space or the grand room as a lot of people talk about in a tiny house because you you got all that head height. And just moving around, this is the wood heater that heats our space and is also our hot water heater. I designed it in SketchUp and then welded it together because there really wasn't anything commercially available that was going to heat my water in a tiny space. So it puts a lot of good heat on the copper pipe which has water in it and it just through, there's no pump, it's just a thermal siphon. You heat water and it rises. So it rises and it goes up to the tank 
there are the solar panels up there, but there's also a piece of glass that you'll notice that's in the roof. And in that roof cavity is a, a steel tank, which is uh, attached to that piece of glass. We fill it with water, and then in the summertime, of course, it just gets super hot with the sun. Um, and we don't have to light a fire to have hot water in the summertime. Um, so the way this uh, works is that when the fire is uh, just getting started, this little lever allows the smoke and the flame to go directly up the flue. Once the flue gets uh, heated up and you get that nice draw, then you drop this down and then that forces the flame uh, to do a bit of an S and it goes past this cold water pipe. Uh, the cold water comes in the bottom and then does one loop in there between the baffles and then rises up and then gets back in the tank. And it makes that rockety sound, that kind of and you know you're really getting that nice good draw. But everything's working. Um, I actually look around, I'm a bit amazed that it, that it all, it worked out, you know? Like, you look at it so long in SketchUp and to at night, you know, just sit there with a beer and look around and you go like, wow, it's, it's all working. Yeah, I kind of marvel at it. It's a good feeling, really good feeling. Pretty conventional sink, really. Um, some people say, well, do you collect your gray water? We don't collect the gray water. We just have a pipe that goes out and we'll put it where we want it and use it, you know, really to help uh, water gardens and things like that. We're not self-sufficient for water. Some people consider that, you know, really being off the grid. There was just no way that we're gonna be able to carry water or collect enough water off the roof to, um, be sustainable in that way so that was one of the design features i just had to go with saying that whatever site we ended up on we had to have fresh water <clears throat> in some way uh, we're only here for a few months but um this site has no water <laughs> so we're carting it in on the truck that can pull the tiny house so that was that was good well, i kind of like this idea of not having to move the plates and things twice so this is where our plates live you know they don't need another place they live in the drying rack this is drawers there, and this is the fridge, which comes out here. That's a 72 liter Esky style fridge. This is an alcohol stove and an oven. And, you know, cooking with alcohol, you know, I don't know why we think we have to cook with electricity or gas, because, I mean, this is, it really is pretty easy. and. We've only stuffed up a few dishes, but that was more of our, our doing. Um, cooks really well. Got these beautiful countertops. This was a nice uh, purchase on eBay, this sort of window that gives you this sort of panorama out the side. So I want to show you a little bit of the storage space that's uh, between the axles. Um, ends up being quite a substantial little space. So we just made a little floor hatch here, and we have a lot of our bed linens in there. Um, it's a game of millimeters and kilograms and you know this is a little bit of um, tile that you really need for the stove and you know it comes right there that's as far as it gets to go because the hatch is there um, this is oh look at that something's building a nest in there what is that oh my goodness we'll have to clean that out um, so these are the batteries I guess that'd be mice or something. I'm glad we opened this up. <laughs> oh my gosh, did the house take longer to build than I thought. Yeah, some great documentaries out there showing the uh, misplaced uh, deadlines of people. And I certainly had my, uh, it's like, oh, I'll be done by da da da. Yeah, but oh, everything takes longer than you think. And it's more costly than you think. But there, there's just been those in those fragile moments, if something goes wrong, you know, after being so tired and, you know, drilled with rain for days. And I mean, there's just been plenty of listening to the despair and then having a good sleep. And then hopefully it feels better the next day. And it usually does. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a long journey. Might take you into the bath and the toilet area.
Right, so this is the toilet. It's a composting toilet. The wee gets stored here, separated from the poo. We use a little, um, it's a little coffee filter that goes in on the top. Do your business. Then you do this little lever, lets it go down into the um, container. And then you give it a little turn. And done. So I'm gonna just step inside the tub. It's a big Japanese style tub. It's, it's quite deep. We, all three of us can get in here. And this is a bilge pump that circulates out hot water in a batch. I should say that it's gravity fed hot water system. And um, so it's vented to the atmosphere. Um, I tried to work out how to do it with a pump and all that, but it was just simpler to stick with the hippie style hot water. Um, you pump this to circulate it and it equilibrates the temperature in the tank so that the water that does come off the bottom of the tank is you know fairly warm and on a hot day like this we'll have a nice shower or a nice bath tonight we say bath but because of how it's set up you can kind of get under there and it's sort of a shower yeah because we have a young child we needed to make it safe for her to be in the loft with us so what i did is we took a a traditional um, child safety gate. So I welded together some steel that holds this bottom piece in place. And then when we get up there, you'll see that the um, there's some more steel holding the top rail in place so that if we ever did sort of get unbalanced, you know, we could grab it and hold on to it and trust that it's not going to um, give, give way. Yeah, is it challenging to raise my daughter in a tiny house? Yes, it is. Um, and my relationship with her is better than it was when we lived in the big house. Because I see what's happening and I'm interacting and I see when she does that new thing. And, and I'm part of life way more than I was in the big house. I can always hear her and I can always see her. I know exactly what she's up to and she can always see me. So it's very securing, I think, for her. You know, she feels like she can touch base with me just by looking up at me at any time, which is awesome. It also forces you to stay up to date with your partner about what's happening. Because you can't have discord in a tiny house for very long. You gotta, you know, address it and settle it. So. Um, things are more fluid in a tiny house emotionally because you, things rise up and um, yeah, feelings are hurt and you need to mend that like there. It's nice for me if I need space that Fred takes Olena and goes away or if it's okay for me to continue having Olena but I need space away from Fred then I just let him know and we just use the outdoor space for that and that's I guess it's part of living in a tiny house, like you've got to be able to say that kind of thing and it has to be okay. So why don't we head on up? Um, the ladder comes out here from its storage area. You get it to hook in there. All right, so head up here to our main loft. So this is uh, where we sleep. I'll turn the lights on for you. Again, LED lights that are sort of in the shelving and they splash light up against the lining board so you not, don't have to look at a, an LED. It's a bit softer on the eyes. All my clothes are up here, so they all live in, the, in these little shelf spaces um, beside the bed. Uh, the bed is a regular uh, queen size width uh, and a double length. So this is how little Alina will get up when she's able to climb, little steps, little handholds, up to her space, which happens to be shared with the hot water tank. So this isn't as big up here, it's just a single bed, um, little window that winds out. We've got the usual plugs up here for AC. We're thinking about whether we'll have another child and um, this is where we sort of imagine that we might put a a second kid's bed so it extends the the what is really the shelf a bit further out and um, so two kids could sleep up here I know it's crazy but you know I think we could do it 
the tiny house itself is just part of it. You know, it is not the whole thing because, you know, you can have a house, but you don't have a community, then you don't have a real home. It's not all about the house. There's a lot of different reasons for the tiny house. It just seemed to coalesce around affordability, but that wasn't the whole thing. It's really about living in a way that was consistent with my values around, um, that I could see happening around peak oil and, and um, our climate change and just the unsustainability of the model that we have. I hope people feel inspired that they can uh, dream something up and do it and build it themselves and with the help of their family and friends um, or have me help them build it. Yeah, I, I hope people feel inspired to um, do more than build a tiny house, to think alternatively about the life that is being sort of prescribed for us by uh, corporate media and all the different ways that we are um, sort of fostered to believe that we need them uh, to provide us a satisfying life. I hope people can feel the love. There's a lot of love in the design, and there's a lot of love in the house, and there's a lot of love in living in it. So. I, I've been very affected by the, um, the idea of the Lakota Indian um, when they make a decision, when the elders make a decision, uh, a good decision is one that is where they, you look at the effect on the land uh, out to, to the seventh generation, and um, we are so not doing that. As I think about my daughter, Alina, and, and her children, I think, well, I would like her to be proud, you know, that this was the guy who at least tried, you know, tried to do something. Should we swap the fly? <laughs> Did I get it? <laughs> you can put that on there if you like, it'll be funny. <laughs>